Hello and welcome back. So I decided to give Takehu a chance. I talked with the innkeeper here and I uh, just put him in and leveled him up. He's more like a healer slash controller. His uh, options are somewhat limited because he's a water shaper and he can turn into a shark. I've not seen that yet. I also tweaked Seraphon and Watcher slightly so Seraphon has mechanics, higher mechanics than uh, Watcher is capable of. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, Gintel. So, what are we doing? Yeah, we want to talk to the guy. Actually, let's just talk to Takeo first. Also, we want to talk to the guy. Uh, we had a little bit of a uh, issue <laughs> in the bathhouse. Anyway, as you turn to Takehu, a shadow passes over your vision. You feel a tug from somewhere deep within your s his soul. A faint ripple creases the air between you to like a forest of ethereal kelp. Surrendered to the sensation. Takehu's soul is vibrant and energetic, almost too lively to occupy its mortal shell. There's a bright thread of energy that trails away from him. You instinctively follow it. You stand in a grand hall, underwater and cloaked in oppressive shadows. Pillars of coral and bone reach up to support a ceiling that must be hundreds of phantoms away. Chandeliers lit with uh, bioluminescent globes dangle from long robes, swaying in languid, tentacular motions. At the farthest end of the hall sits Andra, as tall as a castle keep and leaning forward in her throne. She has adapted the head of an angler fish and regards you with its uh, globular stare. Her sickle-shaped jaw opens and closes in a rectus of conflicted emotions. A life without friction or challenge has left the boy in need of guidance. What? The voice of Ondra pounds at your mind with relentless force. He thinks himself frail, but my heart beats in his chest. He is stronger than either of you could know. He claps her hands and the vision shatters, flooding the hall with a deluge of awareness as you return to your senses. Uh, regarding you with a warm smell, Takehu at first seems oblivious to your momentary detachment, then his brow furrows with concern. Captain, what say? You look a little blue about the gills. Yeah. I just talked to Ondra. I just talked to a fish. Ondra just reached out to me. And God, he spoke to you. Exactly. Skeptical Takehu cradles his uh, chin and considers. <laughs> to leave her son guessing. Oh, this is my tricks and mother through and through. She seemed to care about your well-being. What mother doesn't? Oh, you must be special indeed for Ngati to speak with words. For her people, she lays out cryptic stepping stones hidden in omens. Yeah, I don't much care for that. She wants to speak to me. She gotta speak... Uh, directly. Akira, but send her my fondest wishes. Tell me about water shaping, Takehu. Ah, the art of our ancestors, I say. To bend water to our will is a gift from Mother Ngati to her chosen people. Takehu stands tall and grins with pride. Since devastation swept our way of life out to sea, too much of the art has been lost. Periki, founder of the guild, organized the lore of Ngati's talent into a series of postures and meditations we call the four forms of water shaping. What are these forms? Try as we might to embody Ngati's element, our bodies are not water. Ikera, this is the form of grief, a beginner's test. Takehu closes his eyes and sweeps out his hands, exhaling sharply. The body's internal water is a force that conquers all. Even the mountain will bow to the stream. The form of hope, I say. The guy who crosses one leg before the other and sways on the spot. Water commands its vessel, and the vessel can be shaped as surely as the mountain. 
The form of metamorphosis, Mikara? Yeah, the guy who opens his eyes, which now resemble polished onyx, his smile is hungry, predatory. He blinks and the effect is gone. The art is a challenge to grasp, difficult to master, and impossible to perfect. Unless you are in Gatti's chosen, I say. Um Let's be off. <laughs> I just realized that I don't care too much about the water forms. Now, what can I do for you? A deep frown cuts across his face the moment he spots the kehu. Hey, fish boy. What I oh. tell you last time. You're not allowed in here. Fish boy. That's a good name. The Kara, have we met? The kehu, the kehu frowns, worrying uh, one of his uh, hairs. Oh, have you forgotten our little altercation so soon? How convenient for you. He levels Takehu with a steely glare and begins to count off on his the man's indiscretion on his fingers. Last you were here, you got drunk as a hagfish in a barrel of mead. Why does that not surprise me? Akira, at least one of us is amused. <laughs> Takehu fur uh, furrows his brow. Soti flicks her sickle back and forth, agitated. Soti, what the hell? Then, when I refused to serve you any longer, you stole a bottle of my finest wine from behind the bar. Classic. If that was his finest, I say it was charity. Erk, Soti runs her tongue over her teeth. What are you doing? You drank it all, then clambered onto the stage, pushed the dancer off, and serenaded the crowd with a sloppy rendition of my Wahaki. Clamber? <laughs> These legs do not clamber. The Kehu grits his teeth and points uh, to his uh, ties. Apologize. Well, Gintel, care to apologize to my friend here? I'm not done. <laughs> he roars. Then, when I shoved you out the door and told you not to come back, you tried to kiss me. Well, you're one handsome man. Though he looks as if he's about to protest, the guy who thinks twice and holds his silence. Frankly, I'm surprised someone hasn't killed you yet. <laughs> Even I'm thinking about it. Gintel plants his hands uh, on his hips and does his best to loom over the large Omana man, though the effect is less than impressive. Uh, I vouch for him. Really? Oh, you and me, lad. We be spending our next shore leave together, but leave you me. He grins, all crooked thief. All right, but if he gets up to any more mischief, it's your purse on the line. Great. Akira, punish me appropriately if I misbehave. I'll hold you to that, you slippery bastard. Kintel turns away with a huff, faint blush coloring the tips of his ears. Ah, uh, whatever. So we have to get the hell out of this place. It would be nice to go uh, and sail out. That would be nice. Also, I just need to uh, get ready to deal with some golems, I suppose. Not sure how I'm gonna do that. Uh, but we'll see. I got a plan. So, the golems are both hard to hit and also very resistant. That's not great because if you want to have the highest accuracy, uh, you want to wield uh, one handed weapons. Just one. Just one. Because you get an accuracy bonus. And. Uh, and, uh, of course, if you want to deal with high resistance high damage reduction, you want to deal a lot of damage. That's most easily uh, achieved by using a two-hander. Still, you kind of need both. So I suppose the uh, wielding two weak one-hander is uh, definitely the Gondra's weakest option. In for, you, for me to exist in this form and to join this crew? I know she does. It's funny, I fought against Aethys. I'm chasing him now. I don't think he knows a thing about me. Akira, 
It is for us to show the gods why we are worthy of notice. Yeah, I guess we'll see about that. <sighs> Takehu. We might just have to kick you out of the team. Ecosi, Tela, you have found the satchel. You have some explaining to do. It is not as you must think. Complanca, hear me out. His uh, gaze slides off your face as if he is not able to meet your eyes. Light sweat dampens his brow and he wears uh, the hem of his tunic. What would Aveta make of your treachery? Perhaps we should find out. If you will not support me, I understand. Your contempt is justified. He hangs his head and his shoulders sag, listless as a ship is in irons. But I beg you, please do not tell Aveta. Your scheme is ended. The offer is that. If you will not support me, I understand. Your contempt is justified. He hangs his head and his shoulders sag. But I beg you, please do not tell Aveta. Why not? Where is my seal? Postinago, did you take it again? Uh, she grabs Degnus by the arm and shakes him. He winces and ducks his head, making no move to escape her grip. You will feel the bite of the cat's tail if you have lost it, boy. Well, I guess she is uh, not the nicest. But that's not a reason to uh, group up with a bunch of pirates. Have you ever known abuse to endanger loyalty? Temor Temorina? Who would dare speak to me thus? Should we kill her? <laughs> I guess uh, she doesn't uh, deserve his loyalty. She looks you over once, furrows her brow, then rounds on Degnos, poking him in the chest with her index finger. Is this Nazanali a friend of yours, Degnos? An acquaintance only, Casita, from the Luminous Bathhouse. Come on. You, you just made it sound like I was your whore there. He carefully avoids your eyes and shrugs uh, self-consciously. First you waste my servant's time, and now you have the goal to waste mine as well. She stares at you, Hawkeye, down her long nose and raises a brow, likely expecting you to answer. I like you, you to cover before her. Uh, what the hell is wrong with you? <sighs> Sounds like the power went into your head. Not like you have a lot of power. Miss, I have one ship. Uh, does this belong to you? This is mine. From where did you get this? I, I didn't want to give it to you, I just wanted to show it. She grabs the seal from your hands, then looks at you guardedly. Mind your response. If you have robbed me, I will not hesitate to alert the authorities. From Degnus's satchel, one among several interesting things. Tiveres? Degnus, you will explain this. Veta snatches the satchel from your hands and riffles through it. You have lost an... yeah. And what is this, eh? She pulls the ladder from the satchel with a flourish and shoves it in Degnus' face. She opens the ladder and begins to read. With a strangled cry, Degnus stumbles back and takes off, running full pelt down the docks. Will, will he get killed? Aveta? This is a pity you let him escape. She rubs her temple, eyes closed, and does not speak for a long moment. She exhales in a gust. He will be found. I will make it so. She makes expansive chopping gestures at, as she speaks, emphasizing her point. I did not think he had the stones. And now I will never know the extent of his sabotage. Trade routes, partners, cargo. Anyone may know them now. Merla! She runs a hand through her hair and grimaces. But you have saved my life. Agrasima, for your trouble. She digs around in her hip pouch and produces a handful of coins. Your intervention has given me much work to do. Leave me to my tasks. Of course. She shoes you away with a flapping hand. So I guess 
Dagnos will die. Oh. My reputation increased with the Valian Trading Company. <laughs> Damn. Should we sneak inside the Valian Trading Company headquarters? Oh, actually, we can go inside. Oh. Makes sense. Uh, last time we did it at night. And they kind of attacked me. They didn't appreciate my enthusiasm. For uh, willing to do business with them, I guess. Uh, and I suspect uh, the entire first floor is just completely wiped out. Is what? No. They're when back? Arrogant louts decide that enough is enough. VTC attendant. What happened to you guys? Luca? The clerk uh, buzzes himself about the room, favoring you with a brief glance. He rubs under his eyes and exhales through his nose. Merla, if you are not on the schedule, you are here to waste my time. G examine the clerk. Lucas' shirt is spotted with a number of faded purple stains that you recognize as droplets of wine. Someone has tried unsuccessfully to wash them out. Nothing your in Noting your interest, Luca tucks his jacket closed. The servers at the tavern are clumsy. Most clumsy indeed. He clears his throat and fans at his neck. What's this place? Stumbling from the street, I see. <laughs> Luca sneers and surveys you with a patronizing look. This is the heart of the Valian Trading Company. You would know that if you had a reason to be here. I have a reason to be here. From her office, Governor Alvari carries out the will of the Songretta Mea Compressa. Congress of the company, a body of 11 high stakes investors who collectively operate the Valian Trading Company. We clerks are the fingers of their long reach. He clutches his hand over his heart and bows sharply. Alright, Luca. I guess we may not have business uh, to be here. Luca Alvari? Anyone in here? Standing next to her desk and lost in thought, Governor Alvari looks up at your approach. Her expression of intent focus uh, thaws instantly, and she greets you with a startlingly sunny smile. An interesting surprise. The Watcher of Cadnoa, no? I am told that is your ship in the harbor. A cozy, I mean nothing by it. All newcomers are of great interest here. I am Lueva Alvari, governor in residence of the Valian Trading Company here in Nekataka. What brings you to my door? I come from Port Maya. Governor Clario suggested the Valian Trading Company might have worked for me. Generous of him. I am a little surprised he gave you up, to be honest. His operations on Port Maget must be going more smoothly than reported. How much do you know about the Luminous Adra trade? Uh, enough. Every viable deposit is of interest to us. Cartographers, surveyors, at any moment we have a dozen expeditions underway. Some weeks ago, we received word of a large quantity of Luminous Adra on a distant island. Pukukohara, it is not charted on any of our maps. Ooh. However, Pukukohara is said to neighbor the island of Tikawara, and we've already made contact with the natives there. We dispatched an expedition to Tikawara with instructions to locate the Adra site and determine its value. Our people have neither returned nor sent any word on their progress. Ooh. Alvar spreads her hands in a gesture of helplessness. We are too long a delayed, and someone must finish the job. A watcher can determine if there is essence in the Adra, if it is worth the trouble and investment to remove it. Information for which we are willing to pay. If I am to sail to Tikavara, I'll need to purchase some supplies. Yes, I take your meaning. Here, a taste of what's to come. This will be of some use to you, I think. It entitles you to act as a commissioned agent of the Valian Trading Company. Present it and you will be recognized as such. Hmm. Until then, I believe we are finished. 
Return here once you have word of our agents and our prize. Oh, and take care upon the open sea. There are greater hazards in these waters than a few pirates. All right, Pokokuha. Hara. I don't know. Should they head out? Should they stay inside? I don't know. We got still a lot to do. Seriously, like, there's so much to do. It I'm over to start. Day I'd meet a sailor who gives no praise to Ngati. Ah, she ain't sunk me yet, lad. So, road east. What what is road south uh, supposed to be? Oh, looks like we ran past the paladin. South exit. Oh, this doesn't uh, open up any new exits. We got Perikis Overlook. Uh, we can use that to go toward the, the... Wait, can I check it out? Serpent's Crown. Gulat, Brass Citadel, Sacred Stair. I wonder if all of them are available. Yeah, that's the only location we can go toward. So this leads us to the gullet. Perhaps this is a smaller area. I don't know. Oh yeah, power level is pretty important. The game definitely has a very interesting uh, uh, system. I suppose you can try it a lot of characters. You leave the bustle of the crowds behind, making your way along the winding path into the gullet. Slums of Nekataka. For a time the path ascends the mountain, even so the cramped walls and run-down Huana buildings close in around you, obscuring your view. Sori bites it at her bottom lip, beating it with blood. Anti-religious? Really? You come to a dark passage cutting through the mountain, just wide enough to accommodate a wagon. The path here descends steadily into a, the rock face. After a lengthy journey through the dimly lit tunnel, you come to the gates of the Gulat. The stench hits you first, a foul mixture of rot, stale air and bodily odors. You notice a guardsman pushing a cart heaped high with moldering food, which must account for some of the smell. Ahead, the homes of the gullet emerge as a collection of lights and amid the darkness. You hear the rush of water be below, and the frigid breeze wafts up from the unseen depths like an exhalation. This is the gullet? I had not realized. The guy who glances around, wearing a distasteful expression, raises his arm to cover his nose and mouth. You thought this place would be in a better shape? I thought the Raparu had a piece of the city to themselves. This is a latrine. The Mataru are supposed to take care of those below. This does not resemble care to me. Let us... Let us go on. He gestures ahead, but his hand shakes until he brings it down and clutches it with the other. The guy who turns, turns his gaze to the ground beneath his feet. Take him by the hand, it will be okay, I'm here. What the f- No! Not-
Let's be off. Okay, fairly big location. Traveler, have you any? Surely you've a scrap to spare. <sighs> a gaunt or of woman grabs for your leg. She paws at you with a weak grip, fingers bone thin and trembling. Mercy, traveler. Never have I been so hungry. Give her some food. Kick her? The woman snatches the food from your hands with surprising speed, eyes darting a glance from for any onlookers before she shoves it between her teeth. She gnaws desperately, swallows, chokes, chews again and speaks with a mouth half full from the next bite. Thank you. I'll share it, I swear. Thank you, traveler. The Reparo touches uh, two gun knuckled uh, fingers to her lips. Do you have no access to food? Always there is prize share. But the pile has grown leaner these years. Mm. Little falls to our pile that is not rotten or sour from this week and maybe before. What do you mean? She shakes her head. Forgive me, I say too much. If you would know more, ask Inoi. This place looks like the kind of place where I would murder a lot of people. Our elder listens to those in need, and he speaks. Out of earshot of the guards, he's there. In the house to the right when you cross the bridge, he can speak of the hunger. Her qu quivering arm points toward the southeast. Who's the leader around here? She chuckles darkly. <laughs> The gullet is a lawless place. Forgotten. The only authority here is the Matarus. And they don't work on our behalf. But if it is a wise man you want, seek Anoy in his home. He tries to keep us safe and fed. He does not always succeed, but he does try. Trying's worth a lot down here. Thanks for that information, beggar. The Queen calls these rations. Does she expect the Raparu to subsist on garbage? Is there an answer that would please you? You're right, it's awful! The guy who swallows and diverts his gaze away from the pile. Half-eaten food scraps litter the pile. A rancid stench, stench rises from it. How does this work? They just dump uh, garbage down the mountainside. That dawn star may be able to help. What say? The Don't narrows. All right, let's check it out. You enter a dim alleyway that reeks of urine and torch smoke. A long passage stretches to your left and right, shadows move in, guttering torchlight. But they are nothing more than, the sh than shapes at, the dis at this distance. The chatter and bustle of the galette continues behind you. Go left. This tunnel ends but another branches off. The only sounds are the crackling of torches and Steady drip of water. Go right. You come to a door. It's as solid as the stone around it, with no handle and no knob. It's definitely quiet on the other side. You rap gently on the door and the sound echoes as if in a wide, empty space. Turn around. Go left. Go forward. The alley winds on ahead of you. To the right, you near the din of the multitude and smell of the musk of many bodies. Let's check out right. A tunnel broadens into an exit. Through the passage, you hear the tumult of the gullet, the shouting, wailing, and laughter of hundred Ruparu, the stink of garbage. Wafts toward you. 
Let's turn around. Let's go right. You trudge along the darkened passage and reach an intersection. The tunnel branches off to the right. You hear the distant murmur of voices down the darkened path, but see no one. Uh, the tunnel branches to the left. The floor around the entrance is spattered with... Something as thick and dark as a tar. A star. It looks like Swef. What? Swap can be traced back to the provisioners in the Valley and Republics, where the markets for the plant in question enjoy a rapidly rising demand. Most commonly chewed or inhaled, Swap is infamous for the near catatonic state in which it often places its adherents. Those who use it claim that the drug gives them a sense of urgency and meaning. Lost when the effects uh, fade. More colorful accounts claim that the drug allows one to look within themselves and witness the sight of their own soul. Okay, go left. A handful of guards emerge and block your way, crossing their thick arms over their chests. One of them spits, uh, wishes a black glob at your feet. He rolls a dark plug between his teeth. Better head back, friend. It's invitation only pass here. Attack the guards! <laughs> That's how it works! I feel invited. Uh, Billows of Eternity 2 definitely has more text adventures. Just retargeted. Okay, they are confused. What now, healer? Heal yourself. Uh, maybe do a fireball. Seems like a good one. And don't do double speed. Maybe I should use rods. Wow, that's a that was a big mess. Try to save her. If possible, we need to save her. So Cutroot is working for me for now. I don't know if I wanna go for that. We may just go for another fireball. Seems appropriate. So I have... I can make one skill happen here. Bewildering Spectacle can also make a essential phantom. Stop me for Let's try it. <laughs> Runs into punch people. That's not a bad uh, target. For confusion. I like it. Let's go. Most per rest or one per encounter? One per encounter. I think it's beyond me. <laughs> Alright, seem to be working fine. What did you use? Returning store? Can you target it? No. It's targeted on himself. Any 
Butcher's Mark. Okay, let's go in. No need to ask twice. Let's do Storm. You can also just switch the uh, weapon. Go with melee. Oh, Tug is back. Okay. Heals for everybody. No one died. This is a insanely good buff, so let's do it. Probably should have used it before. <laughs> yeah. What are you using? Bone well, fine pistol. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of garbage stuff. Anything good over here? Adventurous Grimoire. Arcing Whale. Mm. Okay. Ahoy. Ahoy. So... Aye, aye. Uh, we can see something, but that's about it. We just ran into a bunch of uh, bandits. Oh, they weren't really bandits. They didn't even guard anything. I guess I have to just go. You wipe the blood off your hands and continue on. At the end of the passage is a stately door crafted of a Polish mahogany. Through this small slit in the door, you catch uh, flashes of fire cast shadows and bright textiles. The scent of sandalwood and uh, cinnamon oil come to you on a warm draft. Uh, Whatever is beyond the door is likely far more elegant than anything else you've seen near the gullet. Let's enter the hideout! Are you guys hiding the good stuff here? Because if so, I'm very eager to kill everybody. The man claps uh, enthusiastically, a fierce grin on his uh, sharp, sharp featured face. The guards around him hold uh, their weapons close, clearly less amused than their boss. I normally despise unannounced visits. But then, they are rarely so entertaining. He looks into the tunnel, where his guards lie dead. Tell me, what brings you here in such spectacular fashion? And please, do not bore me now. There's a rattle of metal and squeak of leather as he takes a step toward you. You note the stiffness of his gait and a strange thickness in the legs of his trousers. Your guards uh, should have stayed out of my way. Such spirit! You do not disappoint, Aimeka. <laughs> Come on. Friend. Uh, Daryl leans back, sizing you up. As he shifts his weight, you glimpse metal and leather rising above his boot, the bottom of a leg brace. A moment. You are the watcher of the Deerwood, no? Yeah. Let us put our weapons away, so we can speak like civilized folk. We can speak like this. <laughs> are manners dead in this city? You are fortunate I am such a gracious host. He flicks his fingers dismissively. Nevertheless, you could use more friends in Nekataka, and I could use your skills. After a moment, he seems to forget his irritation. There is an artifact called the Cornet of Waves, which is currently in the possession of a Juana named Takano. All these guys, they seem to have the same names. 
I, I'm having such trouble trying to remember it. I would like you to liberate it for me. He flutters his slender hands in a way that resembles a bird taking flight. What? I don't have enough street vice. Why do you need a watcher? Watchers see what many cannot. I can see your shady scheme as well. Takano is a man of many vanities, as your special gifts will no doubt reveal. His villa is on the eastern edge of Serpent's Crown, just downwind of the palace. He pauses, stenting his fingers. The opportunist I first hired was too bold and found herself ejected from the district. With your genteel manners and unique talents, I am hoping you can avoid such complications and persuade Takano. After all, it would be best to avoid drawing the ire of our Mataru hosts. When you have the cornet, bring it to me. I will pay you well for it, and you will find my favor useful in this part of the city. What is the cornet of the waves? It is an old Juana artifact. A musical instrument of sorts. Uh, one hand plays with the elaborate decoration at his sleeve. So you're lying. Ages ago, it was part of a pair. But its companion, the Cornet of Depths, was lost when the old city sank. Both are said to carry the voice of Andra herself. Look no further, silly man. I speak with Ngati's tongue. And are you willing to sit upon my shelf for my entertainment? His eyes crawl over Takehu and he smirks. Then he returns his attention to you. I do not believe in these superstitions, of course. You don't mean valuable in the monetary sense. He coughs into his hand to hide his fluster. I have told you all you need to know of the cornet. Now, I suggest you focus your sharp mind on retrieving it. I need to ask about another matter. What do you require? The principe seem divided, which side you're on? Why must we speak of sides? Like squabbling merchants from the republics. He makes a face as if he's just smelled something awful. Once, there were no sides. Only principe. A people united by common interest and culture. That's bullshit, there's no way. But as our fame has grown, so have our numbers. Many of these new bloods have no sense of restraint and little regard for our heritage. His long fingers straight to his shining uh, Sulancer. Sulaner? Sulanet? What is that? I don't know. Lenet. Sure. Uh, he ain't blowing ballast, Cap. Don't mean there's a course to be charted back in the golden days, though. With a sigh, Seraphin shrugs. If you cling too tightly to old ways, you'll die with them. And if we discard them, who are we then? Simple marauders? Exactly. You're already that. The guy who pinches his lower lip and smiles. The new bloods are principi too now. And many are inventive in ways the old god is not. Hmm, more resourceful killers then. Do not talk around this. I talk around nothing, my cuddled friend. You either take my meaning or you do not. So what happened to your legs? A storm, a rash decision, and an accident at sea. One that took my sailing days, but not my skill with the needle. He smiles cryptically. Life in the dead fire is unpredictable. Sometimes it takes you in its jaws only to spit you out onto some new shore. Very well. Can we just go inside? Don't keep the boss waiting. Well, you... you have nothing, man. Don't keep the boss waiting. Are you kidding me?
Daryl the Lean. You never what saw you us here? Require? A most agreeable topic. I don't know. Should we kill them? Or leave? They're just a bunch of thieves. Like, come on. How seriously are we gonna take them? I don't wanna... Well, to be fair, they're just a bunch of thieves. Thieves are murderers! They tried to kill us in the other room. Huh? We can just say hi like this. What's the chance to hit? This guy's pretty tanky, isn't he? No problem. Some of tanky. Chill fog is. That's a good chance to hit. Hmm. Okay, we can always kill them later. <laughs> what? Let's go. Uh, go to the gullet. I guess this is uh, what we needed to find. And we might be able to, probably will be able to, uh, quickly travel to that location. Ataro's the second this month. And they say the pittings aren't increasing. Do they lie to themselves or just to us? At this rate, Who'll be left to suffer the Mataru's ire? Anyhow, this is a good enough time to take a break, so thanks for watching guys, and see you next time!